I watch. What are they saying? We have to clear from this end. As long as it clears from this end, we'll get a race. Wind 20, 25 mile an hour, dead north. Okay, yeah, right off. So it's just a matter of holding till it clears this end. And then we'll get them away. I expect around about half past eight, nine o'clock. Is that wagon first? No, Peter. You, you're gonna. Uh, Gary, will come on, Gary will go with you. That's the second cut. Which is what's that one? Four sixty. First cut. That's first cut. So you need somebody yeah. with you as well. Yeah. Wait a minute. So you need somebody on there. That's second cut. <laughs> right, there's a minute to go. One minute. Go, didn't I? Yeah. On the bump, bump basket, you got two, two pigeons coming out. Yeah, I'm yeah. at Eppen. Yeah, the other ones. Yeah, Jimmy didn't go. He's bad. I've had to come down. I've had to come down myself. Yours have just gone at up past nine. Yeah, they went brilliant. Yeah, they went right, right into it. Man, it's a hell of a win. Hell of a wind, north wind. Oh, there'll be showers on route, but uh, I reckon you'll do it in, in five, five and a half to six. transport approximately 50,000 pigeons every weekend to uh, the various race points inland. The work starts from Thursday dinner time to clean all the wagons, disinfect the wagons, get them all prepared for the 16 wagons. Um, I have 17 but I have one spare. The 16 will go out on a Friday night at tea time approximately 5 o'clock and I have 154 clubs to pick up between five o'clock and nine o'clock at night. Whoa! And that's what we're doing now, picking the uh, pigeons up for the race for mates and tomorrow. And uh, there's a lot more baskets and pigeons than I anticipated, uh, even from the first folks. And I thought they would have uh, decreased a little bit, uh, but they haven't. We've got as many. In fact, we might have a few more. Um, for the race tomorrow from Maidson. Thankfully the forecast is very good and uh, there should be no problem. I reckon they'll do 56 mile an hour tomorrow. Maybe it's a bit, maybe it's a bit faster. They could do, they might touch the mile a minute.
Well, it's a good liberation site. Uh, there's no obstructions, uh, wires as such. Um, and we're getting a nice, lovely morning here for a change because it's usually uh, been poor a lot of the mornings this year. But uh, fortunately, we're getting a good day for the day. Um, nice, bright morning. A brisk southeasterly wind. It should uh, really, the, the birds today will, I would think, average between 60 and 70 miles per hour. So it's going to be a fast race. Um, the majority of them is travelling around 250 miles uh, onwards. There's uh, just short of 19,000 here today. So um, it should be quite a, uh, quite a sight with them all coming out the transporters together. They're all bustling for that uh, little bit of space in the sky. Here, where we fly here is known as uh, South Hilton Allotments, uh, better known as the Gardens, because uh, the, the, the pigeon lofts is uh, intermingled with um, plots of land where the gardeners um, plant vegetables, um, and, and a lot of them are shown at the annual show every year. We, we have a show in September and they're shown there, and they are very good in, in effect that they, 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 there's, there's no uh, knocking or banging or erecting of things on a Saturday when the pigeons are racing. The racing pigeons are a bit like greyhounds and uh, race horses, they're very very highly strung um, creatures and, and it, it takes the slightest little thing to upset them and um, when it's upset they take a bit of settling down and uh, we try to uh, keep them as calm as possible to reserve the energies for the races. People are buying pigeons a day with pedigrees as long as your arm uh, paying vast amounts of money for them. The, the years actually pigeons changed hands now for over £100,000, which is a lot of money. Um, and But it doesn't guarantee any success. That doesn't guarantee any success. Some of the best pigeons people's had over the years is bit, they've been given to them for nothing, off the friends. Uh, as I see, uh, you can, you can only, it's only a ball of feathers. You cannot see inside its mind. You, you cannot see how big its heart is. And them two attributes alone make for a real good pigeon. These are basically all uh, my long distance birds. These, um, these birds uh, will fly up to 600 miles on the deer. They performed very well in a number of these and uh, most of them's won races, as I say, from continental race points. And uh, they're pretty treasured possessions of mine, these. These, John, around about five to six days, they're ready really now for putting the identification ring on mm. and that will in effect last for life. That uh, you have in the nest here what looks like a cock bird and a hen bird, the cock being slightly bigger than the hen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What's happening? Eh? What's the matter with you? Eh? Yeah, well, what's the matter? 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 Oh, you're going to fight us now. Oh, it's, it's chasing us off its box. It's saying, what we do, won't you? Yeah. It's performed very well, right up to 500 miles, this hen. It's, uh, <laughs> it's sort of... How <laughs> are Hey, what's the matter? Uh, I liken them really to athletes um, in that they're the only athletes of the sky, pigeons. And um, they're really like the, the athletes that run on the track and field events. As I see here, it's, a, it's been a cracking pigeon, this. A very honest, reliable. Um, it's a sort of, it's a sort of hen that a lot of, a lot of fanciers uh, hope to produce. And uh, uh, you, don't, you don't get many of them. Uh, fortunately for myself, uh, she's performed very well. Now she, she'll be laying her second egg, I think uh, tomorrow night, because uh, the clutch of a pigeon is two eggs, 
but uh, the layer one, then the missa deer, and then the layer, layer the second egg. So the, the, the as I see, uh, the clutch, in effect, is is layered over 72 hours. And all it is is a simple case of just popping four or five into my actual hand. They again popped into your mouth and blown into the pigeon's crop. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Come on, come on. Obviously we, we go across the water for the channel racing and normally we go to France but unfortunately this year we've been uh, refused permission or entry into France to release the pigeons through to the, due to the foot and mouth epidemic. But fortunately the, the Belgians have accepted us and uh, we'll be going to Belgium for the last four races. Brussels which uh, is the first one in a fortnight's time. You know, we go to continental races, uh, we usually take the driver, or two drivers, you know, and myself in, in, in this motor, and uh, really what we do is we've got two, two bunks, and then we have, if necessary, a, a piece of, uh, well, it's, it's, like, it's like soft bedding, goes across the seats and you can sleep with another one, so there's actually three of us can sleep in here. Mm -hmm. It's surprisingly comfortable because I usually sleep on that. So, you know, um, uh, you can draw, there's curtains you can draw around here, but I never bother really. This play will be in on Wednesday, oh, yes. It Oops. might have. That's if, you that's if Dixie puts it in. That's if you're kinder. <laughs> It's a country where we've never raced out of for a lot of years. I think it's the early early 50s since we've raced out of Belgium, and um, pigeons obviously uh, see water as um, as a problem, and they take the shortest route over, which is Calais to Dover, which is about 21 mile. But um, with, with with us moving into Belgium, this is going to become quite a problem because um, looking at, as I say, looking at the map, they would have to cover a stretch of water around about 80 to 90 miles. My own personal thoughts is I think the, the best pigeons will cross the longest stretch of water and I think they'll hit the British Isles around about uh, the Norfolk area and then come straight up the east coast. They'll be your winners. The, the also runs will run down into France, come across a short stretch and put about two to three hours on the journey. In this one uh, I've nicknamed the fighter for obvious reasons. It's forever bloody fighting in the loft and it's forever got its coat off. It's 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 a good pigeon. It's um it's got a few timings but it's forever pulling the bloody place of it. It its territory is the whole of the floor, so you've got to be very careful how you feed them because you finish up with the rest of the pigeons getting nothing to eat because it chases them all. I see be quite, there should be quite a few baskets up there at the deer, you know, the, the um, club there. And at the moment this hen has two, four, six, eight, it has all ten primary fights, so it hasn't, it hasn't molted a flight yet, which means, uh, you know, it's in pretty good shape for, for the race. Uh, they, they do molt naturally, but the, the, the longer they can hold on to them primary flights, that, that is the start there where my finger is, the long, longer they can hold on to them, the better it is because they get more propulsion because there's not a gap in the wing. And that's what it's, uh, it's like really like an, um, an oarsman with a hole in his oar, you know, he, he, he cannot get the propulsion through the water. And they're the same, with, but just on, with the wings, you know. You know what I mean, Stuart? Yeah. Uh, with the convoying job, I, I have a, a bit of time during the week to say to them, which, is, as I say, I wouldn't have normally. Um, plus, as I say, I get paid, so 
it's it's a bonus but the only thing is I don't actually watch the birds drop in on the Saturday. There's a fellow up the road giving them a kiss he says and that's what you're giving them a kiss for he says well uh, he says I don't know if I'm going to see them again. <laughs> I've had many great times absolutely fantastic times uh, been a big part of my life uh, I sometimes regret it I should have spent more time with my family it's uh, it's a thing I don't suppose it's um, it hasn't become a hobby for me it's become a form of disease where uh, I just you know you go away on holiday and, and, and it's nice to be away you wait two or three days and you know you're enjoying the surroundings and, and, and one thing or that and then just something a click in your mind and you'll be thinking I wonder how that dark cock's progressing uh, I wonder if them youngsters is flying okay and, and, and it's, it's crazy really because you know you've took time out to be away from pigeons but that instinct is still in you you know and, and, and it's the same as the, the will, will to win you know, uh, I've sort of never lost that, even though the, the membership's diminished. I still have that will to win. Seven nine four two. Years ago, everybody sort of worked, and everybody just had, had, had the you know the leisure time before work and after after work. Now we had a, a complete uh, disaster uh, as far as employment's concerned in the northeast. Uh, we sort of lost the pit. Uh, we lost the shipyards. Uh, we lost a lot of the steel works. Um, you know, and, and, and a lot of people, are, are, you know, within the community that flew pigeons worked at these particular places and uh, obviously they get, they, they've got more leisure time now because uh, not very many jobs became available, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a hard task getting a job now around this area, you know. And That's it. The sports council won't recognise the sport because we, they say we don't put enough time in it. That's exactly, that's exactly what it is. They think we should put... Well, runners just go and train four hours a day running. They think we just go to pigeon loss and do nothing. And what would it mean? Well, we could get grants off the sports council. We could get grants from anywhere, off, right. off the government anywhere, you see. But we can't get it. We won't give us no grants. Right. So that's it. Uh, the, work, the work that goes into the into, uh, racing pigeons is unbelievable. People don't realise the amount of work that's put in preparation, uh, transportation, money-wise. There's a lot of work goes into it. Get my top on now. <laughs> Yeah.
It's just a one-off situation, travelling to Belgium where uh, we can't take any um, sandwiches with meat and uh, cheese and everything, so the North Combine have uh, provided our breakfast for this once only, uh, and uh, for our journey back, so uh, we should be up here. It's uh, cost us nothing. And at last one, there was one Tory Conservative seat and 135 Conservatives, uh, Labour. Hey, yeah. Come on. I mean, fancy, yeah, fancy a man, you know, having his wedding on a Saturday during the season. <laughs> well, he's walking, Never he's getting any... bad, that's why. Football season, at least you can get married and go to go to the match after, can't you? After ceremony, can't it when you during the pigeon season? That's exactly. Right. Right. I think it's most inconsiderate. Oh, is it? Very inconsiderate. Don't blame me. Didn't well, you? Well, he's what, after, you? After eleven years, I know who put the trousers on. Aye. Right. Well, you were not going to that race. I am. You are going to marry me, and you'll. I want multiple orgasms as well on that night. <laughs> there you go. Which she will as no. Which she will as no. That's without the phone call. Yes. <laughs> I mean, when you look at wild birds, likes of a, a, a monk, she what? I mean, uh, you know, uh, and swallows and, and, and swifts. And the, the, the distance here migrate from from England to the East Africa. No, it's it's marvellous how, how the backwards the same, and forwards in the same spot, the same right. spot all the time. Yeah. It takes a bit of um, believing, really, doesn't it? When you think about it, I mean, we 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 go to somewhere where you know we, we, we've got maps. But you always end up at the back of the same house, don't you? Aye. You, you, you tell you that's where you live, you've got him. <laughs> <laughs> uh... as, as they travel maybe 10, 15 mile every, you know, 20, 30 miles here, they, they just drop down about 10 or 15 feet off the ground and they just check the road signs. They check the road signs and then they, they get back up, you know, and off they go. So it's as simple as that. There's plenty of people complaining about the, the length of the journey, but. Uh, I just want to be thankful it's not 1944 because that could have been a battleship. <laughs> this is where most of the Dickens medals was awarded at the birds that uh, really had the messages from uh, Europe into England and uh, which saved a lot of lives. Um, so it's a pretty historic stretch of water that we're really going across now, you know. Um, really we, we owe quite a bit. Uh, to, to, to racing pigeons, uh, people don't realise uh, the amount of lives they really saved during the war, you know. 31 Dickin medals, that's the animal VCs as you know, were awarded to pigeons for flying messages back from the French resistance and from uh, saving air crews. Uh, when they ditched in the sea and uh, yes I think that's another aspect we uh, we need to make sure that members of the public don't forget that uh, element and again I will plug uh, we're also giving some money away from the proceeds of this show to the uh, Animals in War Memorial Fund that hopefully is going up in Whitehall soon.
Yeah, here 10, east for 16 miles towards Alst. Well, uh, as far as we can gather, uh, it's just a, it's a campsite, but uh, obviously when none of us been there, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> we don't know what to expect. I <laughs> could finish up a farmer's field, but uh, that's the only time will tell, really. Okay there, Jim. Yes, thanks. Yeah, it's a Pull the girl round. So what are you saying? It looks like a tight corner. Very tight corner by this map. By this street ahead of us. So I think it's uh, pull up there and have a walk round the corner. Make sure. Put your lorries where you want, maybe there, maybe the pipe here, the yes. here. Right, that's I smashing. I'll okay. get that. Yes, great, thank you. You better go and tell her to get a washing in, Miles. And then we go look this afternoon for because we, we need a big place for all that picture. Yeah, yeah. You in charge of the campsite? No, before, no. yes. Before, not now. Yeah, you're tired. You're tired now, eh? I have 70. Uh, 70 years. Oh, you're 70 you, yeah. you Oh, you look very well for 70 years. Mm. If we were stuck here two or three days, we'll be able to get any water for the birds. We have about yes, three days supply. You must not three days. You're going not stop three days here. Well, the weather in England mightn't be so yeah, good. Then, then you better stay on the campsite, eh? We don't like to move them next morning. No. We prefer to move tonight rather I, than tomorrow. I can do what you want. Can oh, well. <laughs> I can come here tonight. You are the boss. <laughs> All right. That's the situation. I'm, I'm the same as yourself. I would prefer them here, ready for in the morning. Yeah. Uh, uh, I phone tonight. Yeah. Make sure yeah, it is we, good. And we look on television. Yes, that's right. And we're, we're this I, I, ideal. Yes, no bother. This ideal place. Very good. Very good. Does that say a Dixie on that door? Yeah. There's our five tiles. You own personal sit-ups. 20 feet, 20 feet! It's a coming. It's a coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're trying to maximise the space in, a, in that uh, the wagons is kept as far apart as possible. So that when the birds come up to the sides, they don't clash into each other. There's more trouble with the ground than enough for it being uneven. Uh, I just hope that uh, really we don't get any uh, torrential downpours because we could be in deep trouble here. Regering. 
Bij de conservatieven is de teleurstelling na de nieuwe nederlaag bijzonder groot. Partijleider Willem Heek heeft vanochtend een opslag aangekomen. Dan je wint de Leven Partij. The one thing that we have to remember is that now is the time that the people in this country want us to serve them, want us to do the things that we promised that we will do, and they want us to be very clear about our mandate here. Oh, this is not rain, is it? Aye. It's not, is it? Oh, there's a little spot of rain out there. Oh! So it is BBC. There's your TV guy, video guy. That's the weather. 300, right? We even carry our own chef with us, like the England football team, Pierre Le Bon. A cordon bleu chef. One and only. The one and only, yes. The number one. The number one, yes. <laughs> Your pin is falling down. Oh no, why? Breathe out a bit. Just because the camera's on you, you don't have to breathe <laughs> in. Well, just having phoned uh, Manchester up, uh, the, the Met Office, they've informed us that the weather for the next two days is absolutely terrible here at uh, Brussels and it looks very unlikely that we're going to get a, a race. Uh, that means we're, we're going to go into the start of next week. Um, so we'll have to be very careful with our provisions and what we do, you know, it's, uh, it's not the easy lifestyle people think it is when they're sitting in the armchair saying they should be doing this and should be doing that. They should be here doing it. Well, we had a rough idea that we were going to be here a couple of days anyway, didn't we? So, like you say, we've just got to make the most of it. It's bad enough being confined to the area as such, but being confined to the, to, to the bloody barracks. Wagons <laughs> on top of it, there's not much bloody uh, space, is there? Right. Three living in about a bloody yeah. six foot by eight foot square bloody Sunday wagon. Sunday we'll have to stand up the water. We'll have to go back to that campsite. Stop that chair. I put it in the back of the chair. Jimmy Oliver. Tonight I'm going to be Jimmy Oliver. Through the smoke. <laughs> Come on then, let's hear it. Yeah, yeah. Wait, like I was saying earlier on. To get the barbecue going properly, you've got to put the right amount of uh, lighter fuel on. Too much, and it tends to burn the lot away, and the fat tends to flame it all up. Too little, and it will not burn nice. But as you can see now, tons of smoke, no flames, it's cool and spot on. It's the way the barbecue should be. That's how I like it, it's the way the lads like it.
height of the ceiling is very similar, but down the cathedral is uh, a lot bigger. Um, same sort of columns, um, same sort of architecture really, but uh, amazing buildings really when you think about it. Really splendid. You wonder how uh, on earth they built places like this so many hundreds of years ago. But, um, you know, the craftsmanship's been superb. Another bad thing, we really, uh, you know, we, we get sort of um, downhearted about is, is obviously a lot of the general public relating our pigeons to these feral pigeons that hang around the streets, the yeah. towns, the cities, fouling the place up. We've I had mean, a bit of a bad press. You know, to me, like, uh, they have nothing to do whatsoever with, yeah. our, with our own pigeons. No, they've had know? a bad press. I mean, the street, the street pigeons are a... Are a problem and I mean the average life of a street pigeon is something like 18 months two years before they yeah. succumb to disease and most street pigeons have got crippled feet because they like walking all day and being snagged in the bed no resemblance to our pigeons they're not kept the same they're not fed the same mm -hmm. I mean probably they don't fly farther in their lives and go to near a set of fields in the winter you know what mile or two that's right yeah and I say you see them walking around the streets and they're all deformed and dirty and I mean Kentucky fried chicken and <laughs> leftover curries are not what we'd feed our birds on, are they? I know, and <laughs> we're stuck with this stigma. Obviously, people must realise that to get birds to fly five and 600 miles, they've got to be free from any sort of disease and or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> they're absolutely in superb condition. They're, uh, they're a racing animal. Of course they are. You know, they bear as much resemblance to ours as... Um, you know, as, as street dogs would bear to a greyhound. That's right. You know, are the kids riding ponies around here to a proper pedigree horse? Goed, maar uh, de goede zijn weg. Color, color. Duitsland. Newcastle United. Ja. Philip Albert. Ja, 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 ja. Philip Albert. Belgische nee. international. Vind niet, hè? Vind niet, hè? Vind niet, hè? Ja, ja. Ah, race. Good player. Ja. Uh, niet. Vind niet. Ah, race, race, race. Ja. Clermont. 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 Ah, Clermont. Ja. Ah, Kent. Yeah, ja, ja, and you, Brussels. Yeah, Brussels. Uh. <laughs> good, eh? Tuesday. Eh, morgen. Not good. No Morgen. Bad. Bad weather Tuesday. Regen. Regen morgen. Regen. Hey. Deze middag en deze nacht ook. Right. 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 Yeah. Hij zit niet kunnen lossen van morgen, denk ik. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. No good. Well, basically, um, the weather tomorrow in Great Britain early on is not that good, but uh, it's got to improve as the deal goes on. And I'm trying to calculate the time it'll take these pigeons to get into Britain from from this from this race point. And uh, we estimate around about four to five hours. By that time, hopefully, this low pressure system will have moved out into the North Sea and leave a clear passage for these birds to run the coast and uh, get a good race and um, we're quite confident that'll, that'll happen and um, Steve's monitoring the satellite images and one thing or another tonight and I've got to phone him up at 7 in the morning and uh, we'll work between us to get a good race. Well, I've just had a, a full uh, strip in the back of the wagon and wash me here, uh, chat with me here, uh, wash me parts, ready to me feet and do be me clothes. Cold water. Cold water. And I'm trying to get Willie to do the same, but he's, he's fighting against it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you can. <laughs> We've gone from wearing shorts to for no raincoats, I think. <laughs> yes, the Bermuda shorts and flip flops are back in the bag. We're down to wellies and waders now. We need a spare umbrella. 
It's not funny. <laughs> Bottom one's me dad, then we've got me mum, and that's me there, and that's the future wife to be, and that's my son Paul, and that's my daughter Leanne, and that's my family tree. Own design and made it myself. Well, that's the best one out the lot. That's a badge everybody should have. That's the Sunland badge. And is the clan. That would so, that is sexy. Oh, you said that you grew it flip. I'll do it in a proximus. Ja van Bengel naar proximus and you create a 15 minute thing. What did you do this? Sunday lunch. Sunday dinner, eh? This is Sunday lunch. Open champion. Well, unfortunately, today we have to have Irish stew and titties because there's no shops open, so no barbecue. Right, we're the canal here at Hallia. Uh, we've been here three days and we've got a the weather's terrible uh, we can't get the birds under here and uh, we're all getting a bit pissed off the wagons there uh, as you see going past we've just been watering up we've had a few problems getting uh, water this morning but uh, eventually we, we, we've getting to the local garage where where we've getting the water the tanks filled up because uh, they only last about three days and they ran out yesterday hopefully hopefully Tomorrow will be the day. It should be a lot better than this. It's been forecast a lot better than this, so I'll just keep my fingers crossed. Did you sleep well? No. Did you? <laughs> ah, you're not too bad. Apart from Willie snoring. The snow for England. <laughs> Last, any, any final word for the trip? No, just uh, hope it's a good trip home. The birds get to it. Ah, the clouds are breaking up there now. No sky coming through. So we should get them over here. Come on home. I'm happy to go home. It's about time and all. That's all I can say. Smiling, we caught home. Now it's a case of uh, getting wrapped up and getting to the docks as quick as we can and uh, getting back home. You know, how do these pigeons get? They get dropped off in France, 600 mile away, without any maps yeah. or, you know, <laughs> without any directions or, or anything like that. And how do they find the way home? This this is a fascinating thing. People ask me. Uh... Have you got an hour to spare? Have you? <laughs> <laughs> the real research was done in uh, a university in Germany and a university in New Jersey in the States. Yeah. And they did all sorts from, they actually fitted pigeons with frosted contact lenses and these birds could get home when they couldn't see anything more than day and light. They yeah. got to within a mile of the loft and they did a lot of walking around trying to find out exactly where they lived. Yeah. That's but the it. modern researchers have come across with all sorts of theories. The Italians, for example, um, had this theory about the sense of smell. Yes, sir. And that's what, right. what yeah. they were doing in the University of Pisa, they were um, cutting the nose to the nose mm. and blocking the nose with cotton wool and turpentine and seeing if it made any difference to them getting home. And yeah. the problem was that these results couldn't be reproduced in other countries, yeah. like Germany and England tried it. But if you take eggs from England and Germany and rear them across in Italy, that could reproduce the results, which meant that those birds were picking up local clues. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, you can smell yeah. Newcastle breweries on a windy day, ten miles away, when they're brewing up. Uh, so, <laughs> so every area has got its own smell. Uh, I'm and, with you. And of course, every area, every area has its own sounds. That's right. Birds are sensitive to, uh, you know, uh, to to local sounds, and they're sensitive to. Um, ultraviolet light you know mm -hmm. and sensitive, sensitive to polarized light you know how bees use polarized light well pigeons can use polarized light as well and of course they've got a memory because the yeah. older pigeons come from the same direction regardless of the wind against them yeah and uh, this, the, the, there was a guy who at one stage thought what they were doing was retracing their journey in the wagon back home and this guy actually put the pigeons in <clears throat> what amounts to a cement, cement mixer and he rolled it all the way down and the birds still came home. Now they've shipped them to the race points sedated, you know, and they've yeah. found their way home. And modern thinking seems to be it's a combination of a lot of these things, and with young birds, particularly magnetic fields. Yes. So yeah, all pigeons right. are sensitive to magnetic fields, and we know, and you know as a convoyer, certain race points always give us bad races. Mm -hmm. yeah. because, and certain race points birds never leave because of the anomalies in the magnetic field. Now a youngster, a young bird, 
this guy had the bright idea of putting a magnetic coil around its head. Yes. And that affected how it got home. Now, it wouldn't affect an old bird because an old bird's got the ability to switch off if one system isn't working and use another system. And an experienced pigeon, they, they, they think, homes on, on two main things. Uh, it's, they, have a, they have a map in their brain. It's kind of a mosaic map. And they get the direction of this map yeah. and to, in which to go in because it's no good like having a... For example, if you were stuck in the sea in the middle of the night in a, in a rowing boat, you wouldn't know which way to go unless you had a map. So yeah. the pigeon has two systems. One's a map and one's a compass. So, so you, if you don't have your compass, you don't know which way to use the map. Yeah. So the pigeons use the sun primarily as a compass to get the direction they should be flying in. And if the sun's not available, they're using what they can see through polarised ultraviolet light. And then when they're en route, they use geomagnetic clues en route. And these birds that have been raised for a long time build up in their mind kind of a mosaic of landmarks and they know yeah. when they're in the home area so it's not one system it's yeah. like they use all these little bits and pieces of systems now fog you know all about fog but i mean problem. fog fog is a massive problem at the liberation but it isn't a massive problem when they're going home mm -hmm. if you can get pigeons at 30 40 miles start in good weather and they run into fog they'll go straight through it because they're on the line for home but if you liberate them in fog, they can't pick up any of these clues. They can't pick up the sun. You know, the magnetic fields might not be enough, and they'll just mill around and mill around until ones break away. Oh! I mean, they're trying to do two things, aren't they? They're trying to get height first. They're trying to get some height. Yeah. And they're trying to pick up the clues as to which way to go. The bird takes the immediate clue from its neighbour. So one bird will turn and the neighbours all catch on. And pigeons don't like being isolated because they're exposed to predators. Sparrowhawks don't bother birds en route. You know, on, on, sparrowhawks are local killers and they use the local topography and out of the land to, to sneak up on the birds. So they're no problem pigeons coming home, I mean the major predator problem the birds coming home of course is the peregrine falcon. Yeah that's right. No. And, um, when the staple diet pigeons. And, and, and you know we all accept, we all, everybody accepts that when you're racing it's a, it's a hazard of racing but if they are breeding in the area where you have your loft it's totally unacceptable because you might as well be putting a bird table out with your birds. I've always thought the major hazard by far is the weather. Oh, that's right. You know, yes. Because the English weather is so unpredictable and We've got the channel to cross and I think they quit when they run out of petrol. Uh, you know, I think <laughs> I think I think a pigeon a pigeon an experienced pigeon will quit before he's really hurt. Because yeah. he knows he's done this before, he's going to have a sleep for the night. But an inexperienced pigeon will fly when it can't fly anymore. That's I mean right. we've we've had them come back where they've lost what, 50, 60 percent of their body weight. Float of a standstill. Standstill where if with a human being this guy would say I've had enough. Yes, that's and right. They'll push it, they'll push it, you know. And I think they stop when they run out of fuel and when they get too tired or they need a drink badly. That's right. Here we are in the middle of the English Channel and uh, we're some six hours after the liberation of the birds and what marvellous little creatures they are. Uh, a quick calculation tells me that these birds will be within 100 miles of home and uh, as I say we, we, we've got quite a journey to go before we ever think about getting anywhere near home and I just hope that uh, they get a real good race because uh, a lot of pressure hinges on it and uh, a lot of people's hopes, uh, nearly 3,000 uh, lofts up the north east coast hinge on my decision today and uh, I'm quite uh, proud of it at times because we get some great racing and uh, we've had a shower, we've had a three course meal, um, we've really enjoyed ourselves and in fact I, I, might, uh, I might just go and have a beer now just to cool off a bit and uh, have a bit of uh, relaxation for a change.